Let's start off with an interesting story from the National Mall in DC. If you've ever gone downtown and wondered, what is that tiny little house near all the monuments and how can I live there? Wonder no more. The oldest structure on the National Mall, known as the Lock Keeper's House, has reopened for visitors. Oldest existing structure on the National Mall is now back open for visitors. Hmm. The Lock Keeper's House, you've seen it before, yeah. sits at the corner of 17th and Constitution Avenue. It actually has a lot of history. It is 185 years old and it once served as the home of a canal lock tender. When touring it, you can get an immersive multimedia program to introduce Ooh. you to the evolution and growth of the National Mall. It used to be a swamp. You just know that house is going to turn into a 7-Eleven at some point. Some things you just can't stop. But I do want to thank you, Tony Perkins, for answering our questions about the little house sitting in the middle of Taurus Central. It's a historic landmark, which means it's definitely going to become a 7-Eleven at some point. Now, otherwise, somebody would have turned it into obnoxious condos by now, because clearly that is prime real estate for developers. This tour does look pretty cool, though. Plus, the space is only 540 square feet. So it'll be a quick tour, which is right up my alley. This next story is in keeping with the D.C. real estate theme. 4825 Glenbrook Road Northwest is now a vacant lot, but it was once a toxic waste dump for World War I chemical weapons. And now it's under contract for almost $1.3 million after just five days on the market. Five days is all it took for somebody to throw $1.3 million at the empty lot. Now, I knew the real estate market was hot, but who knew it was hazmat suit hot? Folks are willing to turn into the Toxic Avenger for that dream house. What? Y'all remember the Toxic Avenger and the spinoff Toxic Crusaders? Toxic Crusaders, they're gross, but they still get girls. I'm toxic, but I'm tasteful. Anyway, whomever bought this house, don't invite me to the cookout. That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to wear an X-ray tech lead apron in the summertime. Now, according to NPR, the Army Corps of Engineers spent decades removing more than 550 munition items, 2,100 pounds of laboratory debris, and 7,500 tons of contaminated soil. Not to mention six chemical warfare agents, including white phosphorus, arsenic trichloride, and magnesium arsenic. I feel like I need a cancer screening just after reading that. This place is a class action lawsuit just waiting to happen. It's going to have one of those, if you or a loved one are suffering from mesothemia, you may be entitled to compensation. Yes, that's exactly how it sounds to me at four in the morning. Mesothelioma, I see you. It needs one of those commercials. Now, I would rather live in a haunted house than one of those. Ghosts just make noises and slam cabinet doors. They're not actual poison, but I do want to send congratulations to the prospective new owners. I hope the place is indeed safe and you didn't just drop a million dollars on a literal death trap. Mesothelioma. Let's shift gears and talk about a story that could affect the entire D.C. area. Area residents might see the emergence of cicadas from Brood X who overslept this spring and summer. There's not actually any uh, full broods that are going to emerge this year, but one thing people here in the Washington area may see uh, are what are known as stragglers. They're periodical cicadas that for one reason or another have gotten off cycle. And so it's possible that you're gonna see some. Um, they get off cycle by one year or four years. And so you may actually see some straggling brood tens emerge this year, but it won't be nearly what we saw last year. Yes, uh, these are the insects we call stragglers. Uh, some, other, uh, some other insect people may call them lazy. You may also call them teenagers. Some of them may be on that stuff. These are my kinds of cicadas. They sleep in and show up a whole year late. Like, where the party at? Y'all missed everything. It was Cicada Coachella the whole summer. Come back in 16 years if you lived that long. You remember how growing up the girls used to say, I wouldn't kiss you if you was the last guy on earth. Okay, just me. Okay, well, cicadas are living out that reality right now. They're going to be some very desperate cicadas. I can tell you that right now. Last call was never this grim. Straggler cicadas are going to open an illegal after hour spot off Georgia Avenue with a little bit of hookah. Somebody's auntie cooking Ethiopian food in the back. By the way, that joke is funnier if you've been to an illegal after hour spot. That's at least according to my writer, Leon, because I wouldn't know anything about that being an upstanding pillar of this community.
But good luck finding love in a hopeless place, little cicadas who forgot to set their alarms in 2021. The early bird gets the worm, but hopefully the late cicada still gets the meta. Trademark. We're staying in D.C. for this last story where players from the Washington Spirit are set to receive their National Women's Soccer League Championship rings this Saturday. Now, just look at these gorgeous rings. Congratulations on this hard-earned and well-deserved honor. Now, let's work on upping the player salaries. I don't want to see any of these awesome rings end up at the pawn shop. Those diamonds are real, by the way. Three lucky season ticket holders will also be selected to randomly receive these championship rings as well, which basically means they made three extra rings by mistake. Still, a very cool reward for being a loyal supporter of the Washington Spirit. So good luck this season, ladies. Let's run it back and get another ring. My favorite story? Come on. You know it's got to be the straggler cicadas because I've been there before. They're a whole year late to the type of party lawmakers were inviting Madison Cawthorn to. It is